What if, right this second, a radioactive spider bit you? Would you wake up tomorrow with Spider-Man's powers? Or would you start dying from the inside out? Sounds dramatic, but this isn't just a comic book fan's fever dream. This question touches on real science about genetic mutations, radiation, and the absolute limits of human biology. Today, we're going to completely demolish the myth and uncover the science behind Peter Parker's transformation and what would actually happen to you if you went through the same thing. In the comics, it's simple. Peter Parker gets bitten, feels a weird fever, and the next day wakes up with superhuman reflexes, insane strength, and the ability to climb walls like it's nothing. But in reality, a bite like that would bring pain, disorientation, and maybe consequences that are way, way worse. Let's talk about radiation for a second. Ionizing radiation has enough power to literally damage the DNA inside your cells. But here's the thing, these mutations aren't upgrades, they're chaos. Imagine a super delicate Swiss watch and someone shoving a screwdriver right into the gears. What happens? Everything breaks. The effects of radiation aren't fiction. Survivors from places like Chernobyl and Hiroshima show this with brutal clarity. Cancer, infertility, immune system collapse, mutations that don't give you superpowers, just suffering. And the spider? If it was exposed to enough radiation to have its DNA altered, it probably wouldn't even survive. Spiders are fragile, and even if it did survive, it wouldn't be able to transfer its genetic code to you. DNA from another species doesn't just enter your body because you got bitten. But wait, what about the venom? In Spider-Man's story, the venom is also part of the equation. In real life, spider venom is a cocktail of chemical compounds designed to paralyze or digest prey. Some cause extreme pain, others destroy tissue, and some are potentially lethal. But in no documented case has a human come out of a spider bite with enhanced senses or the ability to stick to walls. Just a lot of pain or tissue death. And here's another kicker. Venom doesn't carry DNA. It doesn't rewrite your genes. It's not a code that installs superpowers. It's a chemical weapon. Now, let's imagine a completely absurd scenario. A radioactive spider with special venom survives, bites you, and your body accepts all of this. Even then, the chances of a beneficial outcome would be practically zero. You're more likely to die from infection or anaphylactic shock than become your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. The truth is that the science behind Spider-Man's origin simply doesn't work in the real world. But what if we put the origin story aside and focus on what really matters, the powers themselves? Could they actually work? You climb walls, you swing between skyscrapers, you have the strength to stop a moving car, and you dodge punches with video game level reflexes. All of this looks amazing in the movies, but is it biologically possible? Let's start with the most visual one, wall crawling. Spiders do this with millions of microscopic hairs called CT, which split into smaller structures. This allows them to use weak Van der Waals forces to stick to surfaces. It works beautifully on a spider's body. Now, try applying this to a human. Scientists estimate you need adhesive surfaces covering 40% of your body, including arms, legs, chest, not to mention the difficulty of unsticking yourself from the wall with each step. Even with genetic engineering, this physics simply doesn't scale up. Peter invents his own web shooters, which makes sense since humans don't have spinnerets or glands that produce silk or specific proteins to store it. Today, scientists have tried inserting spider genes into goats, so they produce silk in their milk. It works, sort of. Still far from the elasticity, strength, and quantity needed for you to go flying between buildings. But suppose we already have perfect webbing. You'd still have to withstand the impact of each swing. Remember fighter pilots? They pass out at about nine Gs. Now. Imagine throwing those forces on your shoulders dozens of times per day. Your ligaments would snap. Your joints wouldn't last a week. Just this detail alone would be enough to put any human in the hospital. And superhuman strength? 
Spiders are strong for their size. They use hydraulic pressure to jump far, for example. But humans don't have the structure. Our muscles are built for endurance, not explosive strength. To lift a car, you'd need muscles with the tensile strength of spider silk, something that would require completely restructuring the human body. And the reflexes? To react like Spider-Man, you'd need a nervous system that sends signals almost instantaneously. This would require ultra-fast synapses, way beyond what our bodies can achieve. And the energy cost of this? Olympic athlete level 24-7. Literally impossible to sustain without collapsing. But here's where it gets really interesting. Even if all of this were possible, strength, agility, perfect webbing, there's a question nobody asks. Could your body handle this lifestyle every single day? Let's say you have the powers. Climbing buildings, fighting villains, swinging between towers. Sounds exciting, right? But what would actually happen to your body? Each web swing requires insane strength and endurance. The tension in your arms and shoulders would be brutal. One bad swing and boom, dislocated shoulder. Or worse, stress fracture. Wall crawling would bring another type of problem. Constant friction, continuous muscle tension, pressure on your fingers. After a few days, calluses, blisters, inflammation, maybe even nerve damage and a loss of sensation. And the fights? These aren't normal punches. These are ton level impacts. With each hit, risk of concussion, fractures, internal injuries. Professional fighters train for years and still get hurt. You as a superpowered civilian would face this daily, no breaks. The energy all of this requires is surreal. Elite athletes need eight to 10,000 calories per day. Spider-Man, with his routine of jumping, swinging, and fighting, would need even more. Eating would be your second job. Not being able to keep up would mean chronic fatigue, collapses, or passing out mid-swing. Now, here's the worst part. Your mind. Living under constant risk, hiding your identity, making life or death decisions, this takes an immense psychological toll. Insomnia, anxiety, guilt. Being a hero would also be a journey toward mental exhaustion. In real life, the people closest to Spider-Man's lifestyle are extreme athletes, stunt performers, and parkour practitioners. They live with constant injuries, pain, scars, even with training and safety equipment. If even these professionals end up broken, what about someone trying to be Spider-Man 24 hours a day? Let's talk about something the movies never show, the economics of being Spider-Man. Think about it. Peter Parker is constantly replacing his suit, his web shooters, his equipment. Every fight damages something. Every swing wears out the web shooters. In the real world, this would cost thousands of dollars monthly. And that's not even counting the legal issues. Property damage from your fights? That's on you. Accidentally hurt someone while stopping a crime? Lawsuit. Operating without a license? Illegal vigilante activity. You'd spend more time in court than fighting crime. Then there's the social cost. Constant lying to your friends and family. Missing important events because you're out being responsible. The isolation would be crushing. Studies show that people who live double lives suffer from severe stress disorders, depression, and relationship breakdowns. And here's something really dark. The psychological profile of someone who chooses to fight crime in a costume every night that's not normal behavior. It might indicate underlying trauma, a savior complex, or even addiction to adrenaline and danger. Now, before you get completely depressed, let's talk about what science is actually doing to make some of these powers possible. Gecko-inspired gloves that can support a human's weight on glass? They exist. MIT has prototypes that work using the same von der Waals forces we talked about. Artificial spider silk? Companies like Bolt Threads are genetically engineering bacteria to produce spider silk proteins. It's not perfect, but it's getting closer. Exoskeletons that can enhance human strength? The military is already testing them. Imagine combining that with advanced material science. Brain-computer interfaces that could speed up reaction times? Neuralink and similar companies are making this a reality. The point is, 
We might not be able to create Spider-Man exactly as he appears in comics, but we're getting closer to creating something that could work in the real world. The story of Spider-Man is fascinating because it mixes science with imagination. He's not just about powers. He's about responsibility, choices, and the weight of doing good, even when it hurts you. But when we put this fantasy under the microscope of biology, everything changes. The bite? Highly unlikely. The powers? Nearly impossible. The lifestyle? Unsustainable. And yet, we love this character because deep down, Peter Parker represents what's most human about us. The struggle to be better, even in the middle of chaos. Today, science gives us gecko-inspired gloves, fibers that try to copy spider silk, and projects that play with genetic engineering. But we're far away from seeing a real Spider-Man. Or are we? If a radioactive spider bit you today, would you take the risk? But here's my real question for you. After everything we've learned today, knowing the science, knowing the costs, knowing the reality, would you choose the power or the safety?